Hey there, I'm Jason Mercer. Before I dive into my story, take a sec to like and subscribe if you're into tales of family drama and unexpected twists. Trust me, you won't want to miss what's coming. I'm this 25-year-old guy who's done pretty well for himself, built my own tech startup from the ground up, and it's really taking off. Life's been good, you know? I've got this amazing fiancé, Emma, and we're planning our wedding. Everything seemed perfect. Growing up, it was just me and my dad, Robert. Mom passed when I was little, so dad and I, we were thick as thieves. He was always there, cheering me on at every soccer game, helping with science projects, the works. I thought I knew everything about him. Jason, you've made me so proud, Dad said at my college graduation. Your mother would have been over the moon. I remember thinking, yeah, we did it, Dad. You and me against the world. Last month. I'm at the office wrapping up a big project when my phone buzzes. It's Dad, and he sounds off. Hey, son, don't forget about your birthday party this weekend. There's something important we need to discuss. I figured it was about my trust fund. Mom left me a pretty hefty sum set to kick in on my 26th birthday, which was coming up fast. Sure, Dad, everything okay? Yes, yes, just family matters. We'll talk at the party. Little did I know how loaded those words were. As the big day approached, I noticed Dad acting strange. He was distracted, constantly checking his phone, and seemed nervous whenever we talked about the party. Dad, you sure everything's all right? I asked one evening. He forced a smile. Of course, son. Just finalizing some details for your big day. I shrugged it off, chalking it up to party stress. Emma and I were excited about the celebration. We'd invited all our friends and family to the estate for what promised to be an epic bash. The night before the party, I couldn't sleep. Something felt off, but I couldn't put my finger on it. I tossed and turned, replaying recent conversations with Dad in my head. You okay, babe? Emma mumbled, half asleep. Yeah, just excited about tomorrow, I lied. As I stared at the ceiling, I had no idea that my entire world was about to be turned upside down. The day of my 26th birthday party arrived, and the estate was buzzing with excitement. Guests filled the backyard, the air thick with laughter and music. I should have been on top of the world, but something felt off. You okay, babe? Emma asked, squeezing my hand. Yeah, just... Dad's been acting weird. As if on cue, Dad approached, looking nervous. Happy birthday, son. Having a good time? I nodded, forcing a smile. Thanks, Dad. Everything's great. The party progressed, and I tried to enjoy myself mingling with friends and family, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something was about to go down. Suddenly, Dad clinked his glass, calling for attention. My stomach dropped. I have an important announcement, he began, his voice shaky. The crowd hushed, all eyes on him. I've kept a secret for far too long, Dad continued. It's time for honesty. My heart raced. What was happening? I have another family, he blurted out. The world stops. I must have misheard him, right? What do you mean, another family? Dad's words come out in a rush. I've been married to a woman named Sarah for the past 18 years. We have two children together, your half-siblings. I feel like I've been punched in the gut. Are you kidding me right now? This is a joke, right? But Dad's face tells me it's all too real. My wife, Sarah, and our children, Tyler and Mia, as if on cue, a woman and two teenagers stepped forward from the crowd. I'd never seen them before, but the resemblance was undeniable. He starts explaining something about meeting Sarah on a business trip, falling in love but not wanting to hurt me. Why are you telling me this now? I managed to choke out. Dad looks away. They're, they're in some financial trouble, I thought with your trust fund coming up. What the hell, Dad? I growled, my voice barely controlled. Sarah spoke up, her voice sickeningly sweet. We're so happy to finally meet you, Jason. Dad turned to me, his eyes pleading. Jason, I know this is a lot, but I'm hoping we can all come together as a family. Family? I spat. You've got to be kidding me. The audacity of it all hit me like a tidal wave. Share my trust fund with them? Are you out of your mind? Emma gripped my arm, trying to calm me. Jason, breathe. Let's talk about this later. But I was beyond reason. You lied to me my entire life. 
and now you want me to hand over my inheritance to these strangers? We never meant to hurt you, Jason. We just want to be a part of your life. Stay away from me, I snarled. All of you. The teenagers, Tyler and Mia, looked uncomfortable, shifting from foot to foot. You don't mean that, Dad pleaded. They're your siblings. No, they're not, I shot back. They're the product of your lies and deceit. The party had dissolved into chaos. Guests were leaving in droves, whispering and pointing. Emma tried to intervene. Maybe we should all sit down and talk about this calmly. There's nothing to talk about. You've made your choice, Dad. You chose them over me, over Mom's memory, over everything we had. That's not true, Dad protested. I love you, son. Love, I laughed bitterly. You don't even know the meaning of the word. With that, I stormed out of my own birthday party, ignoring the calls of my name behind me. Emma followed, her face etched with concern. As I reached my car, the weight of everything crashed down on me. My whole life had been a lie. The man I thought I knew, the father I loved and respected, was a stranger. After storming out of my birthday party, I couldn't just sit around. The anger, the betrayal, it was eating me alive. I needed answers, and I was going to get them. We need to dig deeper, I told Emma the next morning. There's got to be more to this story. She nodded, determination in her eyes. I'm with you. Where do we start? I cracked my knuckles, booting up my laptop. Follow the money. Dad's always been successful. But lately, he's been acting weird about finances. As we dug into Dad's financial records, a disturbing pattern emerged. Large sums of money had been disappearing from his accounts for years. Look at this, Emma pointed out. Regular transfers to an offshore account. That's got to be for Sarah and the kids. I felt sick. How could he afford this? His business isn't doing that well. That's when we stumbled upon something even worse. Dad had been cooking the books at his company, embezzling funds to support his secret family. Oh my God, I whispered. He's been stealing. This could ruin him. As angry as I was, the thought of Dad going to prison made my stomach churn. And what about Tyler and Mia? They were innocent in all this. Emma squeezed my hand. Jason, there's something else you need to see. She pulled up a series of articles and police reports. My jaw dropped as I read them. Sarah's a con artist? I couldn't believe it. Multiple identities, fraud charges. Um, she's been doing this for years. The realization hit me like a ton of bricks. She's manipulating my dad. This whole thing. It's a long con. Just then, my phone buzzed. An unknown number. Hello? Jason, it's Linda, your father's assistant. We need to talk. I met Linda at a quiet coffee shop. She looked nervous, constantly glancing over her shoulder. I've been wanting to reach out for months, she said, sliding a folder across the table. Your father's been acting strange. I think he's in trouble. I flipped through the documents. Bank statements, emails, photos. It was a gold mine of evidence. Linda, why are you showing me this? She sighed. Your father's a good man, Jason. He's just lost his way. I think Sarah's behind it all. As I left the coffee shop, my mind was reeling. The pieces were falling into place, but the picture they formed was ugly. Back at home, Emma and I pored over everything we'd uncovered. We have to confront them, I said finally. All of them, together. Emma looked worried. Are you sure? It could get ugly. I nodded, feeling a mix of determination and dread. It's already ugly, but we need the truth, all of it. I picked up my phone, my hand shaking slightly as I dialed Dad's number. Dad, we need to talk. All of us. You, me, Sarah, the kids, tomorrow at the house. There was a long pause before he answered. Okay, son. We'll be there. As I hung up, I looked at Emma. Whatever happens tomorrow, thank you for being here with me. She smiled, squeezing my hand. Always. That night, as we prepared for the confrontation, I couldn't help but wonder, how had it come to this? My perfect family, my successful father, it had all been a lie. Tomorrow, I'd face that lie head on. Little did I know the truth would be even more shocking than I could have imagined. The day of the confrontation arrived, and I felt like I was going to be sick. Emma squeezed my hand as we waited in the living room of the family estate. The doorbell rang, and I took a deep breath. Ready? Emma asked. I nodded. As I'll ever be. Dad walked in first, followed by Sarah and the kids. 
The tension was thick enough to cut with a knife. Jason? Dad started. I'm glad you called. We need to talk. Oh, we're going to do more than talk, I said, pulling out the folder of evidence. We're going to get to the truth. Sarah's eyes widened as I laid out everything we'd uncovered. Her past cons, the embezzlement, all of it. What is this? She sputtered. I turned to Dad. She's been playing you, Dad. All of us. She's a con artist. Dad looked shocked, but Sarah's face hardened. You don't know what you're talking about. Don't I? I countered, pulling out more documents. Multiple identities, fraud charges. It's all here, Sarah. Or should I say Rebecca, or is it Amanda? The color drained from Dad's face. Sarah, is this true? She tried to deny it, but the evidence was overwhelming. As the truth sank in, Dad looked devastated. I've been such a fool, he whispered. I felt a pang of sympathy, but I couldn't let it sway me. You've made a lot of mistakes, Dad. Huge ones. And now you have to face the consequences. Just then, we heard sirens. Sarah made a dash for the door, but Emma blocked her path. Going somewhere? Emma asked, her voice steel. The police burst in, and everything happened in a blur. Sarah was arrested, screaming accusations. Dad was handcuffed, looking defeated. As they were led away, I turned to Tyler and Mia, who looked shell-shocked. I'm sorry, I said softly. You didn't deserve any of this. In the aftermath, I made a decision. I wouldn't share my trust fund directly, but I set up a foundation to support Tyler and Mia's education. They were innocent victims in all this. Months passed. Emma and I got married in a small, intimate ceremony. As we exchanged vows, I felt a weight lift off my shoulders. We were starting a new chapter, leaving the lies behind. News came that Dad had been convicted. Sarah, too, was facing multiple fraud charges. It was a bittersweet victory. My business continued to grow expanding beyond my wildest dreams. The irony wasn't lost on me. As I succeeded, Dad had lost everything. On a crisp fall day, I found myself at Mom's grave. I hadn't been here since before the truth came out. I wish you were here, Mom, I said softly, placing flowers on her headstone. You'd know what to do. As I stood there, I felt a sense of peace wash over me. The lies had been exposed, justice had been served, and I was forging my own path. I'm going to be okay, I whispered. We're all going to be okay. Walking back to the car where Emma waited, I realized that while my family wasn't what I thought it was, I had built something real and true with Emma. The future was ours to shape, free from the shadows of the past. The story you've just heard has come to an end. Now I have a question for you. If you were in my shoes, would you have given your half-siblings a portion of your trust fund? knowing they were innocent victims of your father's lies and Sarah's manipulation? Or would you have kept all the money for yourself, feeling that your father's betrayal was too great? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Your perspective might be completely different from mine, and I'm really curious to hear what you would do in this situation. If you enjoyed this story and want to hear more like it, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Your support means everything and helps me continue sharing these complex real-life dilemmas. Thanks for listening, and I can't wait to read your responses.